Hello Year 2 and welcome back to school. We hope you've had a wonderful Easter and enjoyed lots of time with your family over the Easter holidays. We're going to be trying something a little bit different this half term. Uh, please bear with me and Mrs Upton because this is the first time we've tried it. Uh, we're going to be putting together a PowerPoint for you to work through with us where we'll be teaching you and you can sit and listen and pause the video when we ask you to pause it, have a go at an activity and then move on. So first of all, welcome back. I hope you've all stayed really safe and we're going to have a little look at today's timetable. So as you can see, we're starting the day with our reading comprehension. Then we're moving on to core skills. Then we've got maths, spelling and grammar, English, and then connected curriculum this afternoon. It's up to you how you do this. If you want to do it like we would at school when you come in and you do your reading, then your core skills, then your maths, then have a little break, spellings and English, then an, your lunch break. It's completely up to you. But we want to see that you're doing the work. So please remember to send that in to us at year two at redbrookhays.staffs.sch.uk. So, starting with our reading comprehension, we are going to be reading the world of ants. It's 10 minutes for reading and 10 minutes for answering the questions. If you read it quicker than this, this is absolutely fine. That's just the maximum amount of time we would like you to spend on it. And as you can see where it says recording, it tells you where we want the work to go. So it says, please write your answers in full sentences in your exercise book. So this is where you now need to go and get your exercise book. If you can't find your exercise book, I think you were all given one by Mrs Upton. A piece of paper is absolutely fine as long as you've got somewhere to write your answers. So pause the video now and go and get your exercise books please and write Monday the 20th of April in your book please. Okay hopefully you've got your exercise books now and you've used your beautiful cursive writing to write Monday the 20th of April in your book. Your next job year two is to read this little bit of information there's not a lot there so read it carefully and then you've got two questions to read. Now, obviously, you have not got this little bit where it says to tick one in your books at home. And we want you to write it in full sentences. So all I'm going to ask you to do right now is just read this information, read the questions, get an idea in your head about the answer. And then I will show you how that needs to be written in your book. So pause the video now. When you've done that, you can press play. So hopefully you've had time to figure out the answers and I can now show you how that would be written in your book. So the first question was, which word in the text describes what worker ants are like? So in your book, your answers might look like this. Number one, the word something best describes what worker ants are like. So you're picking out that word. Your second question, the queen ant, and then you're finishing that sentence off. So obviously it would have been a tick if you had the sheet, but you don't. So this is how we need you to do it. Fill in your answers now in your book and then pause the video whilst you do this. And then we're going to go through the answers together. Hopefully you've all had time to have a go answering those questions now. So we're just going to run through some of the things that can help us when we're answering um, comprehension questions. So we talk about finding out those, picking out the key words, don't we? So the first question said, which word in the text describes what worker ants are like? Who are we trying to find out about? Yes, the worker ants. So that word, worker ants, that's what we need to find out about. So in the text, we need to find where it tells us about the worker ants. So if we come over back over to the text, who lives inside? Inside the nest lives a big queen ant. Most of the ants who live in the nest 
are busy worker ants. So we've picked out the key word worker ants. Which word is used to describe the worker ants? So we've got some options here. Does it say that the worker ants are sleepy? No. Does it say they are noisy? No. Does it say they are busy? Yes. Most of the ants who live in the nest are busy worker ants. So your sentence should have said the word busy tells us, describes what the worker ants are like. Okay, so those keywords can help us, can't they? So let's go on to number two. Give yourself a tick if you got that right, by the way, guys. Well done. What does the queen ant do? Again, it says tick one, but we need to write it as a sentence. So we've got some options. This time, who are we finding out about? The queen ant. Well done. Now, this one's a bit easier, guys, because in the text, we've got, what do we call this? Can you remember? Tell your grown up. You're right. It's a subheading. And it says queen ant. So we know that that sentence underneath is going to be about the queen ant. So do we need to read all of this bit? No, we don't because we know we've picked out that key word. The queen ant spends all her time laying eggs. Okay, so our question was, what does the queen ant do? Tick one. Does she keep the nest clean? She might do, but does it tell us that? No, it doesn't. Does she lay eggs? Yes, it does say she spends all of her time laying eggs. Does it say she moves eggs? No. Does it say she finds food? No. You're right, she probably does keep the nest clean and she probably does find food. But this says she spends all her time laying eggs. So the answer we are looking for is lays eggs. Give yourself a tick if you got that right. Well done, guys. Okay, guys, so now you need to put your books away for your guided read, your reading comprehension. We finished our reading for the day, and it's now time to do some core skills. You all know what times table you're working on. If you've forgotten or you're finding this tricky, please send us an email and me or Mrs Upton will check for you. If you can't get onto um, TT Rockstars, you should all have your logins. But again, get in touch with us and we'll try and figure it out for you. But if not, there is something called hit the button. And on there, you can choose the level that you're working on. So if you're working on your five times tables and divide by five, you can go on that. If you're on your twos or your tens or your threes or so on, it is on there. But this is now time, 20 minutes for you to practice your core skills. If you don't have access to a laptop or an iPad, you can just get your grown-ups to write you some calculations down, but we want you to spend about 20 minutes practicing this. Obviously, if you're using the Timetables Rockstars, it does come through to me and Mrs Upton so we can check. We might even be able to get some kind of competition up and see who's getting the most points. That would be exciting, wouldn't it? So pause the video here and enjoy your course skills time. Okay, you should have had your 20 minutes now on your core skills. I hope you all managed to get onto your TT Rockstars or hit the button or managed to practice in some way possible. We're now going to move on to our math activity. So this is going to be about 45 minutes spent on maths like we would in lessons and the recording today is either going to be in the book that you've got, on paper, you might even be able to do chalk in the garden, you're making your own tally chart so any way that you can make a tally chart if it's sending me a picture it doesn't matter as long as you're showing me that. So let's have a little look. We've got to have a think. Now we do this every day, don't we, in school. So this is just that little bit of time where you have a couple of questions to think about and you have a go. 
So our learning objective is how can you make a tally chart? So have a think. What is a tally? And what happens when we get to five in a tally? Okay, so pause the video now and have a little think about those questions. If you've got a grown up to talk to, that's fine. You might have an older brother or sister or a cat or a dog. You could just speak out loud or it could be that you're just thinking about it and getting an idea in your head. OK, guys, hopefully you've had chance to have a think. So underneath there was a little clue. A tally chart is an easy way to record information. Using tally marks, we record information as it is being collected. Once all the information has been collected, we can count the total. So today our work is all about a tally chart. So I want you to have a little go at doing this for me first. So it shows you how the this shows you how the tally represents different numbers. So you're going to practice with a grown up before you start to do your do it challenge. So on a board or in your book or on a piece of paper, can you show me how we would write three as a tally, the number three? When you've done that, I then want you to show me how we would write the number five as a tally. Now, can you show me number eight as a tally? And finally, show me number 10 as a tally. Now, guys, you might want to just pause here and make sure you've had a go at doing all four because we're going to have a little look at it in a minute and how it will look. So pause your video now and have a go at that challenge. OK, guys, welcome back. So you would see there was a little clue that was telling you what tally mark is and it showed you a couple of examples. So hopefully you use that to help you. Now, I'm just going to show you the answers so you can check. So show me three as a tally is simply three lines. So each line represents one thing. OK, so if three people chose a dog as their favourite animal, then you would draw three lines. OK, then we moved on to show me five as a tally. Now, five looks a little bit different. What's different about five? You're right. It's not just five lines next to each other. Why might that be, do you think? Have a little think. So you can see that we draw four lines, one, two, three, four, and the fifth line goes across. We go across the gate. Now this is to make it easier that when we've got a really large number, so if we were showing the number 30, instead of having 30 lines to count, we could count in fives, you're right, okay? So it makes it easier. So you need to remember when we're doing tallies, that when we do five as a tally, the fifth line goes across the gate. OK, brilliant. Well done if you've got that right. Well done if you managed to spot this little clue here. Then we've got show me eight as a tally. So you can see we've gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So once you've done your fifth one, you then carry on doing your others next to it. So if we just look at show me 10, we've gone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you can see that that's 10 or to make it easier, if we were counting that, we could just go 5, 10. OK, so hopefully now you know how to show numbers as a tally. If you're finding that tricky... Now is the time to pause the video, get a grown up to ask you to practice some more on your board or in your book or wherever you can. And don't move on to the next part until you are secure and you really know how to record those tallies. Because if you can't do that, you're going to find it very tricky to do the tally. And you know that when we're in school, we make sure we're secure before we move on to that do it don't we and it might mean that you have a little bit of extra time on the carpet with Mrs Muller or Mrs Upton just like you would in school if you're finding it tricky 
go and find a grown-up now and just say can I have a little bit more work on this now we know grown-ups are busy so it might be that they say I'll have to come back and show you in a little one that's fine don't worry about that but just make sure you are really secure before you move on so your do it today is this now again I've got the challenge here you obviously haven't got this at home but you're going to just write the answers in your book I'm going to show you it now and read it to you tell you what I want you to do then you're going to pause the video then we'll go through the answers so it says complete the tally chart now here we can see a tally chart we've got favorite colors blue red yellow green this section is our tally and then we've got a section at the end which says total. So what does the data tell you? Tell me the story. So this is what I would like you to do today. I want you to find out how many people chose blue as their favourite colour. How are you going to find that out? Where is that information? You're right, it's in the tally. So all you need to do here is you're finding your totals. So how many people chose blue as their favourite colour? So you look at favourite colour, you find blue, you're going to count how many there are. Remember this is worth five, very good. Work out the total and in your book all you need to write is blue and then the number next to it. Red and the number next to it. Yellow, the number next to it. Green and the number next to it. This is showing me that you can read a tally and you understand that we're getting information from it. Pause the video now, do the do it challenge. When you're ready, press play and we will do the answers together. Okay guys, hopefully you've had chance to complete that and write down how many people have chose blue as their favorite color, red, yellow and green. So time to look at the answers. So this is where you're just going to go through how many people like blue we know this is five so we don't have to go one two three four five we can just go five six seven eight the answer's eight give yourself a tick if you got it right well done red again do we need to count all of these no we can count in five you're right so five ten eleven 12 your answer should be red 12 well done if you got that right how many people liked yellow one two so your answer should be two and how many people liked green one two three and ticket this is a chance now for you to check your answer so you are going to get a pencil and you are going to mark it if you got it wrong and you don't understand why you got it wrong now is the time to pause the video, have a little look with a grown-up, work it out again. What is it you're doing wrong? Are you just not counting carefully? Are you forgetting the, the gate is the fifth one? Make sure you're secure because we're moving on to the secure it now. If you're not, get a grown-up to help you. Okay. So, your secure it today is to make your own tally chart for your friends and family and find out about one of these topics so obviously it's a little bit strange at the moment and we can't see our grown-ups uh, our families and friends when we want to but I know lots of you are probably doing what Mrs Munn is doing and facetiming or calling your friends and family to keep in touch so this is a really good opportunity for you to ring all of those lovely people, your friends and your family, and find out what their favourite thing is. So I put some examples here. It could be their favourite sport. It could be a favourite animal or pet. It could be a favourite fruit. Or it could be something that you come up with yourself. You might have a better idea. It might be a favourite TV programme, food. It can be anything you want. We just want you to have a go at making your own tally chart. Now, if you're doing favourite fruit, for example, you might already want to choose five or six fruits that they can choose from. Because otherwise, you're going to have a lot of information to write down. So, for example, Mrs Muller might go, 
Right, I'm going to find out the favourite fruits of my family. I'm going to do an apple, banana, pear, grapes and oranges. And I would ring my mum and say, Hello mum, I'm doing a tally chart for school. What's your favourite fruits? And I would give her the five options. And then when she tells me which one it is, I would put down one line on the tally to show that that's my mum's favourite fruit. I would then say, can I now speak to dad and ask him his favourite fruit? Then I would do my sisters, my friends and so on. So obviously ask a grown-up. It might be that the grown-ups might need to text some people if it's friends because obviously you can't be ringing everybody. But ask the grown-ups to help with this. Okay, so this is what your answers might look like. So we looked at this tally before. You might do it in this way. So you draw the thing. So if I was doing a fruit, I would draw an apple and an orange and grapes and your tally and your numbers. You might just want to do it simply like this with no pictures. Or there's another one here, look, where we've drawn the picture and we've put the tally and then how many people at the end. I don't mind how you show me this. If you get in the garden and you draw a big chalk tally chart, fantastic, take a picture and send it to me. If you do it in your book and you get a grown-up to draw the table using a ruler, absolutely fine. As long as you are showing me that you understand how to do a tally chart, so if seven people like a dog, you've shown me that seven people like a dog, that's all I need to see from you today. So just do it in any way you want to do it. Okay, fabulous. Okay, you're deep in it now. Dexter makes a tally chart of the animals he saw in the zoo. So here's his tally chart. Tick one box below that shows all of the animals Dexter saw and explain why the others are incorrect. So this is time where you're obviously just going to have a little look. So you need to pause the video in a minute and you need to look at box one. So how many turtles are there here? One, two, three, four, five. How many did he say he saw? Oh, so he did see five. So it could be box one. But now we need to look at how many elephants he saw. How many elephants did he see? One, two, three. Oh, hang on a minute. Could it be box one? No, it can't. Why not? You're right, because our tally shows that he did saw one, two, three, four elephants. So we know it's not box one. So then we look at box two, box three and box four. So pause your video now and work out the answer. And I'm going to go through it with you in a minute. You just need to be able to tell me whether it's box one, box two, box three or box four. Okay, guys, hopefully you've had lots of time to figure that out and you should have written down whether it's box one, box two, box three or box four that is showing him the animals he saw at the zoo. So let's have a little look. So box one, we already looked at and we said, well, there were three, only three elephants and he told us that he saw four. So we knew it couldn't be box one. So go into box two now. One, two, three, four, five turtles. Ah, so it could be this one. How many elephants? One, two, three, four. Let's look at our tally. Four. How many pandas did he see though? Yeah, one. But if we look at the tally, he saw two. So can it be box two? No, it can't. You're right. Okay, lovely. Let's go on to box three now then. So how many turtles? One, two, three, four, five, six. Could it be box three? No, it can't. You're right. There were only five turtles, so it's definitely not that one. Now we're only left with one, so do we just go, oh, it must be that one? Or do we still need to check? Yeah, you're right. We still need to check. So let's go through. How many turtles did he see? One, two, three, four, five turtles. How many elephants? One, two, three, four elephants. Yeah. How many pandas? One, two. Brilliant. And how many horses? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Well, we've got five here, six and seven. So the answer is box four. So well done, guys, if you got that right. If you've managed to complete your do it, your secure it and your deepen it, well done. If you only manage to do your do it because you were finding it really tricky, that's fine. But at some point this week, it would be a nice idea for you to try and practice doing a tally with your grown ups because we're going to be moving on to something a little bit different tomorrow. OK, that is the end of your math session. So now would be a good time for you to put your work away, go and have a little snack, go and have a little run in the garden, have a little break. When we come back, we're going to be looking at our spellings for the week. OK, guys, welcome back. I hope you've had a nice little break and a snack and you're ready to have a little look at your spellings now. Now, with your recording for this, it can be in your book that you've done your other work in, your comprehension. Or you could just do it on a piece of paper or if you've got magnetic letters or things like that, it's absolutely fine. Now, as you know, whenever I give you some new spellings on a Monday, we always have a little explore, don't we? And we try to find the spelling pattern. So Mrs Mulliner has put your spellings here. And all I want you to do for the moment is just have a little look. Read those words and can you spot a spelling pattern? So pause the video now, read them to a grown up or to yourself and underline the spelling pattern that you can see. OK, so you should have noticed that all of those words have what two letters? You're right, they all have the A-L. Now some of them have A-L-L. -L, some of them just have A-L. What sounds are those letters making in those words? Let's have a look. So we've got all. But all. K. All. W. Ork. T. Ork. Always. F. All. S. M. All. Also, but old, bald. You're right, the AL is actually making the OR sound. So what I would like you to do now is an opportunity to practice some of these words or all of these words. And I thought today, keeping in with our rainbow theme, you could write your spellings in pencil and then go over the top with different with a coloured crayon okay so for example if you wrote the word all you would write it in pencil then you might get a red crayon and go over the top then a yellow crayon and go over the top then a green and a blue and a purple okay it's just a different way to practice your spellings if you want to do it in a different way that's absolutely fine but this is I'm going to give you a different way of doing it each day so it's a little bit more exciting okay so pause the video now, you've got 10 minutes to practice that and then we'll be moving on to our English work today. Okay guys, hopefully you've had a chance at practicing your spellings, there'll be a different way to practice it tomorrow and a different way on Wednesday, then Thursday and Friday you'll be doing grammar with Mrs Upton instead of spellings. On Monday will be an opportunity for you to practice those spellings in a little spelling quiz with your grown ups. And again, you can let me know how many you get right. So moving on now to our English work. So this is going to be in your exercise book. You're going to be doing this writing. 15 minutes of handwriting practice and 45 minutes of, of writing activity. So you might want to have a little look at a letter that you're finding quite tricky and have a go at practicing that one. When you're writing your answers in your book, it's not a rush and a race and do it as quick as you can. Remember, what do Mrs Muller and Mrs Upton say? Take your time and make sure it is the best that it can possibly be. Okay, so I'd just like you to have a little think now. And again, it could be a moment to share with a grown-up, but if the grown-ups are busy, then it could just be a moment for you to think and maybe write down some ideas or just think about them. 
What are your favourite facts and why? So think about a really interesting fact that you know. Why is that your favourite fact? Now it might be a fact about a superhero. It might be a fact that you know about dinosaurs. I know lots of you like dinosaurs. It might be a fact about um, your favourite animal. It could be anything. But why is it an exciting fact? Just think about that. So we're going to have a little look at this text together. And I've just noticed part of it is cut off. Don't worry because this will be in available in a document online as well and I'm going to read it to you. So look at the text and I would like you to have a go at reading it. So you need to pause the video now and read it through. I am going to read it through with you now as well, just in case anybody's finding it tricky and there's not an adult available. So, all about the Arctic. The Arctic is an area of icy land and sea around the North Pole. It is one of the coldest places on Earth. The coldest temperature ever recorded in the Arctic was minus 68 degrees Celsius. My goodness, that's freezing! Even though it is very cold, lots of plants, animals and people call the Arctic their home. I wonder how they manage to stay and live in that cold weather. wonder if we'll find out more. Okay. The North Pole. The North Pole is the northernmost place on Earth and it was the first visited by explorers in the early 1900s. The North Pole is not a country and it is not in a country. It's in the Arctic Ocean. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? So it's not a country. It's not in a country. It's as part of the ocean. Lots of people think that the North Pole is on land, but it isn't. The nearest piece of land is over 700 miles away. The North Pole is actually co covered in a very thick sheet of ice. The ice is so thick that it is possible to walk on top of it. Oh, lots of interesting facts in here. I wonder what kind of text this might be. Have a little think. The sun is in the sky all day and all night during the summer months at the North Pole. The sun rises each year around the 21st of March and does not set again until around the 21st of September. This means that the North Pole is sometimes called the land of the midnight sun because the daylight is endless. In the winter months, there is no sunlight at all at the North Pole. It's completely dark from when the sun sets in September until it rises again in March the following year. Oh, can you imagine living in the dark from September to March? That's September, October, November, December, January, February, March, seven months of dark. Oh, I'm not sure I would like that. Right, let's see what we're going to do next. So, I want you now to have a little look again. What is the best piece of information that you have learnt from this text? And why? Why is it so good? What's good about it? So, you might want to write it down. You might just want to point to it on the PowerPoint and tell a grown-up. What you're going to be doing in a minute is recording this in your book. So, for example, if Mrs. Mulliner decided to choose, now bear with me, hopefully this will work, the fact about it being completely dark from when the sun sets in September until it rises again in March the following year, that's really interesting and I didn't know that. So that's definitely something I've learned and the best piece of information I think I've got. So you should have an idea in your head. And now this is what we would like you to do. Let me just come off this. Okay. So in your book, what is the best piece of information that you have learned from this text and why? You might write this. My favourite piece of information is, and then Mrs Mulliner would write there, that it's dark from 
September to March, you're writing whatever your favourite bit is. So if it's that there's animal and animals and people that live there, my favourite piece of information is that animals and people live in the Arctic. If it's that the coldest temperature was minus 68 degrees, my favourite piece of information is that it was minus 68 degrees. Here's another example. My favourite piece of information is that the North Pole isn't actually land. It's a large sheet of ice. Who knew? I like this piece of informa information because it is surprising. So, write down what your key bit of information is from the text. And then, I like this piece of information because. So, Mrs Mulliner liked the bit about the dark because it was surprising. Or, it shocked me a little bit because I didn't know that. Okay, so pause the video. Write your information down. This is the end of your English session. The last thing I'm going to go through with you is briefly how the CC Connected Curriculum is going to work. And that's it for the rest of the day. So pause it now. It might be time for lunch or a little break at least. Finish your English and then we'll look at the next bit together. Hi guys, I'm hoping you've managed to have lunch and a nice little break. Um, I'm just going to explain the connected curriculum for you because we've done it a little bit differently. So Mrs Munler has put together a connected curriculum menu which will be on the school website. Now on there you will see a range of 15 different activities. So this is going to be at least three weeks worth of work. There's some geography activities, there's some science, there's some art, there's some music there's lots of different things and there. there's cooking you will just choose with your family which ones you think you need to do now what we're asking is that over the course of the week you are expected to complete at least two of the activities from connected curriculum so you don't have to do one every day but you might want to but there needs to be two that are completed by the end of the week and we need to see this either by pictures or um, emails, whatever you can give us. So, And it'll be when you come back to school, you can share them. So select the activities which you think you will enjoy. You can do them independently or with other members of your family. Be prepared to bring them into school to share them with us on your return. Now today, I don't want you to pick one because I've done a launch. Because when we have a new topic, we always do a launch, don't we? So I've made a launch today. So, can you find some different British objects and talk about them? Why are these important? What do they represent? And where are they from? So, this is a really good opportunity, again, to speak to your grown-ups. Maybe if you've got nans, granddads, great-grandmas, great-granddads, they might know some really typical British objects from when they were younger as well. And what I would like you to do, you can either draw some, you could take a photograph, you could write sentences about them, you could re record a video and explain what they are and why they're important. But I just want you to think about them typical British objects and why they are important. Because our new topic is called exploring Britain so it's all about Britain so that's your challenge today for the launch and also to have a look at the menu the connected curriculum menu look at the activities on there and it might be a good idea for you and your grown-ups to pick out to put a star next to the ones that you really like um, to just talk about which ones you would like to do again as I said it is on the year two homepage on our school website please try and include a range of activities so don't just do all of the geography and no science or all of the art and none of the science and the geography we need you to be doing it a bit of everything it's okay if you do a science activity and a geography this week and another science and another geography next week and then the week after you do something else as long as you've got a range of activities now hopefully that's worked well today with mrs mulliner recording over the top of the powerpoint if there are any problems that you found, any questions you've got, please email me because this is new to me and to Mrs Upton 
and to everybody in school so if there's something that we're doing that's not working for you please let us know so we can have a go at fixing it we just want to make it as easy as we can for the children and the family and you and the families so please do let us know um i hope you found it helpful um this is something you're going to get every day so it can be something that you leave the children to get on with on their own or it might be things that need supported um but hopefully it will help ease a little bit of the the pressures that people are feeling um well done year two it was lovely talking to you even if i didn't get any responses i'm hoping lots of you have tuned in and accessed your learning today and really enjoyed it so please tune in tomorrow and we'll find out what we're learning then take care guys bye